as we go into the word again after the great seed we received what a welcome reverend dr adieu you are welcome in jesus name thank god for your life as you touch lives across the nation this book of the month is the book of books and i want us to read together this verse when you study this book you will see the picture of jesus christ fulfilling his promise to the disciples he told them something major that i want to share with you today from verse 1 verse 1 of acts chapter 2 let's read together from the scripture and i will quickly put this in your hand because this is why many christians continue to struggle let's read together and when the day of pentecost was fully come they they were all all with one accord in one place he told them all of them he said they not one missing 120 disciples who should be ashamed of what just happened who should be ashamed they were all together in one accord and in one place please write this down loyalty the master key to royalty loyalty this is what is destroying Christians today especially Pentecostals loyalty they fast, they pray, they beg God, they scream, they shout, they memorize Bible. But because they are not loyal, they cannot attain to royalty. When the anointing came, the Holy Ghost is a person. Any believer who speaks in tongues and thinks that is all it takes to experience royalty, it's wasting time loyalty let's say that together loyalty. loyalty say it with authority loyalty, loyalty. the master key loyalty. to royalty many are not enjoying the royalty because they are not loyal to the holy ghost a life without loyalty to the holy ghost they are the christians you see the devil use for experiment they are the Christians you see dying with diseases, dying in shame, dying without help as if God is not in heaven. The worst thing you can do to yourself is to be a Christian and refuse to be loyal to God. Most Christians enjoy the love of God, they enjoy the mercy of God, but if you screen them, they are not loyal to God. And the devil knows that. When you are not loyal to God, your lifting is not in view. God raises those who are loyal to him. And it is the sickness in the body of Christ. It's the sickness in churches. When men don't know and understand the definition of loyalty, they continue to beg. They continue to struggle. You see somebody, who have been in the Lord for so many years, cannot point hand to victory, cannot celebrate the reigning of the Holy Ghost. If you notice, what Jesus told them was, stay together, be united together, wait for the promise together, don't be scattered, and I will send the Holy Spirit. Many have received him, but the evidence is not there. You cannot tell that this man has met the Holy Ghost. You can't tell that this woman know who the Holy Ghost is. Why? Where there is no loyalty, there will be no royalty. God saved us into a royal family. If you read First Peter, let's read it. Peter wrote this to the body of Christ globally. 
You can imagine the day Peter wrote this and the year in which we are in. Loyalty to the Holy Ghost. Loyalty to God. Loyalty to structure. Loyalty to spiritual leadership. It's the key that sets you to higher success. To fly where no power can stop you. Today, loyalty is no longer in the church. And people have been poisoned and been drugged with heresy that they believe. Whether I'm loyal or not, I'll get it anyhow. I'll get it by fire, by force. And we see the defeat. We see the shame. We see the embarrassment from Genesis chapter 1. We are told, but read with me first, Peter 2, 9. Here is what the scripture says. As we trace loyalty, God raises and blesses and uses men who are loyal. Women who are loyal, not to man, but to the Holy Ghost, but to the Father. Listen to what he told them, but you, you, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. What is this peculiarity about? You are special, you are peculiar, you are royal, that you should show forth, show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look at that. He was talking to a group of people. It said you are not like everybody else. You have been chosen. You have been chosen from the many billions. And he told us why they were chosen. A royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. We are all supposed to live like the man of God said a few minutes ago, we are all supposed to live, if not better than John the Baptist, but to live exactly like the master himself, Jesus Christ. What do we see today? That is not the story of many Christians. Many, many have gone from church to church to church looking for what is inside of them. They will never find it because it is only the Holy Ghost and that's why we love that scripture. David said, except the Lord build, they labor in vain that tries to build. Except God build my house, build my life, build my future. No matter what I try to do, it's in vain. Somebody say loyalty. Can I hear you say loyalty? The question is this, what is loyalty? Because no matter how long you read scripture and you don't understand, the first thing we have all been taught, it's about the first man and the first woman. We were told that they ate what they shouldn't have eaten. Some said they did what they shouldn't have done. And some said, and I tell people, now you have a copy of the Bible. Why don't you read it? Why don't you read it for yourself? It's no longer they said, he said, that preacher said, if you have a copy of the Bible and you genuinely are hungry to know, the first thing the Bible teaches about the first man and the first woman, they were disloyal. And their disloyalty led to disobedience. Their disobedience led to rebellion. And they lost royalty. They were disloyal. All God said to the first man, everything that I have is yours. He has said the same thing to us today. All things are ours. He said what is mine is yours. We are joined heads with Christ. But the Lord told him of that tree which I spoke to you, thou shalt not touch, thou shalt not eat. That was the one the devil convinced him. That was the one the devil said, who cares? How do you know what he's telling you is real? Why don't you just do what I'm telling you? Forget about what your father told you. Do what I say. And that has led billions of people to struggling. This man collapsed. This man died because God said, the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. He died spiritually. And that was what Jesus came to give back to us. He was cut off from God. He was cut off from glory. Paul said, all have sinned and fallen short 
of what? The glory of God. The man was cut off. The Bible says he died spiritually. He lived to be 930 years, but it was the most miserable years of anybody on earth. You will never hear Adam achieving anything after that time. Thank God he named everything before he became disloyal. From today till the day Jesus come, man's cancer is the cancer of disloyalty. When you raise your hand to say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord. And when they lay hands on you and say, be filled with the Holy Ghost, be filled. To some people that think the Holy Ghost is another spirit. A spirit to help you feel good. A spirit to help you speak in tongues. A spirit to help. No, he is God himself. He is God himself. John 14, 16. He is God himself. He is the third God in Trinity. And make sure nobody lied to you like the Lucifer did in the garden. Lack of loyalty is why people are suffering. And they will continue to suffer because they are always pursuing this, always pursuing that. And they will tell you, nobody can do me anything, nothing, nothing. And you look at them 30 years later, 40 years later, 60 years later. God never negotiates loyalty. He has never negotiated it. Jump from page to page. You will find out that God has never. Let's read. He said, and I will pray. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comfort that he might abide with you. For how long? How long is this spirit going to stay? But before he said that, can we read 15? Because sometimes it's wonderful to go straight to a verse of scripture that you like. Because the scripture can be taken out of context. And that's why you read it all together. Can we read verse 15? If you love me, be loyal to my commandment. If you love me, love and loyalty go together. If you love me, then he said, I can now ask the Father for you who have loved and stayed loyal. I tell people, there's nothing as dangerous as the cancer of disloyalty. And there's nobody who knows you better than the Holy Ghost. Your pastor will never find out what you do in the hidden places. Never. No matter how gifted he is as a prophet, he will never locate all the little notes we send here and there, all the gossip we send. He sees everything. He knows your heart. All the gossip before you drive into church, the one you gossip on your way back after fellowshipping with God, he sees. And he will never use you. I've told you God always loves everybody, but he can't use everybody. He loves everybody. Don't be deceived by that. He loves everybody, including those going to die tonight. He loves them. But he also gives them the power of choice. Here is the cancer of Christians. Disloyalty. It began in Adam. And that's why the spirit of disloyalty can never experience royalty. We are born to reign. We are born to rule. We are born to be in charge. But that's not what many experience. We are under. Solomon discovered that and said, how can anybody be filled with the Holy Ghost and still be under the devil? It's called disloyalty. It's called disloyalty. I said it's called disloyalty. The spirit came to live in us, not for us to lead him, but he is to lead us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, Paul teaching said something so powerful about loyalty. But this is so prophetic that so many may never get it. This is what he said. Romans 8, 14. Loyalty. The master key to what? To royalty. And I believe everyone who will follow this truth you will begin to enjoy and experience royalty in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I wish you can say that amen from the depth of your spirit. Amen. Expect royalty from tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you can be loyal. Like Jesus was loyal to him. Even when death came, he was loyal. Loyalty 
is the test that many have failed. Let's read it. For as many as are what? Led by who? The Spirit of God. They are. So when you backbite, is it the Holy Ghost that leads you to backbite? When you gossip, is it the Holy Ghost that is leading you to do that? Now when you slander your pastor, can that be the Holy Ghost? When you slander your own brother, can that be the Holy Ghost? Disloyalty to the Holy Ghost. When we know what it says, don't do. And we do it. That was all Adam did. It looks so simple. It sounds so simple. And especially today, that we live in such a kinesious environment. You look at the environment where many are disloyal to God, and it looks as if they are doing good. Please listen. The Holy Ghost is God himself. You remember, sir, when he saw Nathaniel, Jesus told Nathaniel, a man in whom there is no guy. The man said, how did you know me? How do you know me? Because he saw Jesus as just a carpenter who became a preacher. He never saw Jesus as a God loaded with all knowledge. Can I tell you something? You and I can hold hands to pray here, but God knows you more than I can see. Why I'm busy praying, Father, do it. Lord, do it. Lord, do it. He said, this is fill the vessel. And that blocks God. No matter how I shout and I gather the men of God, let's pray. Lord, where are you? Do it. God looks for loyalty. He looks for loyalty. He knows that man is full of sin. But when God saves you and I, there's one thing he cannot play with. And that is loyalty. You may never be told this. And that's why this month is very important. Very, very important. Jesus was loyal to death. It was Jesus who carved out the prayer we pray today. He said, Father, is this the way you want me to go? Because there are people who don't want to do nothing for God. If it causes their time. If it causes their strength. If it causes their energy. Forget it. They want to do everything easy. Jesus looked at heaven and he said... Father, if this is the cup that I must drink, then I receive grace to drink it. Nevertheless, not my will. Paul wrote to the church in Philippians when they were beginning to misbehave. He said he was faithful and loyal to the death of the cross. This man knew this people is dying for hate him. This people is struggling for hate him. He knew they were spitting on his face, but he was loyal. But when you talk to people today, you know what they hear? That's Jesus. I'm not Jesus. That's Jesus. Okay, who lives inside of you? Who lives in you? Where did you get your own Jesus from? Can I tell you something? If you discover the power of loyalty, because we live in a generation where people are falling like hot potatoes. They are telling you, don't follow the Bible like that. Don't follow the Bible. Don't follow. Don't be fool. You have your own way. You have your own choice. God help those who help themselves. You can do anything and get away with it. That's why I was so happy when he was speaking about John the Baptist. Jesus opening his mouth saying, there is no man born of a woman. Who is? Who is? Greater than John. John, God knew you and I before we were born. He knew. That's why nobody else could die for anybody's sin but Jesus himself. Loyalty is the master key to royalty. Every page of the Bible you can see. When Jesus shared some stories about heaven, because he's the one who lived there, he's the one who came, he spoke so much about loyalty. I know this is not what we hear all the time, but the Holy Ghost lives in you now. He lives in you now. He lives in you. Whether you feel him or not, the reason why many are not riding in the high places, we are not loyal. Can you imagine 120, all of them said, Jesus said, we shouldn't go anywhere. We should stay here. But they remember, there were those who said, let's go out fishing. Peter told them, but not the day of Pentecost. The Bible said, when they were all gathered, united together in one place, nobody complaining, nobody giving excuses, nobody said, why you guys are waiting? Let me check something. I'll be right back. Not one.
including his mother. He said, I will send the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you why some things have not happened for many. Lack of loyalty. And there are three areas we must be loyal as we get ready to pray today. Number one, the Holy Ghost came into you to help you to be loyal to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I want to use your landlord. Those of you who have ever, ever, ever rented a house before, rented an apartment, or pay a mortgage. You know that that house belonged to the government until you pay it off. You are loyal, knowing fully well. They say, sign here, sign there, sign here, sign, sign. And many today under the sound of my voice all across the world if there's any area satan has sat on your blessing sat on your royal benefits it's your disloyalty to god never knowing that we have the eyes of god himself jesus said when i go he will come when I go, he will come. It is better for you that I go. If I don't go, he will not come. And this is what the Bible teaches. Please write this down. The Father gave us Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. And when God finished his work, he sent Jesus. And Jesus came and when he finished his own part of the assignment, like the man of God said, he also said, I'm going, but I will send you a gift. Another person, another one exactly like me. They were loyal to Jesus and Jesus told them, this one is like me, exactly like me. He is with you now and he shall be in you. And they all knew what he was saying. Jesus gave us the Holy Ghost. Jesus sent the Holy Ghost. They are all three in one. Everybody loyal to one another. The Father to the Son. The Son to the Father. And the Holy Ghost to the Son. When you say in Jesus name today. It's not Jesus that leaves heaven to come here. It's the Holy Ghost on earth. And for the past 2000 years. The Holy Ghost has been on earth lifting people and bringing others down answering prayer you don't need to pray for 20 hours if you are just loyal loyal he's not looking for available people only he's not looking for people who are able only we know he's the one that is able to do but he's looking for faithful and loyal people Loyal to a fault. Loyal that the Holy Ghost can bear witness. Sir, he entered the family of Jesse and they all dressed up with their shoulders, with their v-neck and v-chest and God who knows loyalty. Sir, what about him? No. What about him? No. What a, does God hate people? No. He loves everybody. But when it comes to those who will display royalty, God is looking for those who will be loyal. The remaining days of this great month and this great year, may your motto become loyalty to God no matter what. Can I hear that amen? Loyalty to God no matter what. If you let the devil talk you out of loyalty, I know so many stories in the Bible and I encourage you to read it. Do you know a man named Job, sir? The Bible tells us about Job. How was Job? The richest, the greatest in Job chapter 1. And when trouble came, what did the wife tell him? He said, cause this useless God. Job said, ah, ah, you were here when we were billionaires. You were here when we were uh, thousand years. This is just a trying of He said, to hell with you and that God. To hell with you and that God. Do you know what it means to tell somebody cause God? We should cause God. He said, I don't believe that nonsense. All this loyalty to God. Look at what it has led us. Look at what it has cost us. Lawyer, 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 lawyer. And Job said, you are speaking like a foolish woman. I will never cause God. I will not be disloyal. You know what happened? That wife died. I said, that wife died. And God gave Job what? Another wife. Gave him what? Another children. Ten! They grew. Read what the Bible says about them. They were better than the first ten. Why did God leave such stories in the Bible? Remember a man that God said, everybody go! Don't look back! 
And the wife told the man, you are a backless, boneless, useless man. Why won't we look back? With all our investment, they just put fear in you all the time. You are afraid to look back. I will look back and there's nothing anybody can do. And the father said, children, don't follow mommy. Don't follow mommy. Children, don't follow mommy. Children. They held on to the hand of the, because he said, run out and don't look back. The Holy Ghost was watching. The moment she turned back, the book says, Jesus was the one who tells us, say, remember Lord's wife. The shortest verse, remember Lord's wife. Three words. What was he telling them? God does not play with loyalty. He says she's still a pillar of salt tomorrow. You know what I told you about Lord's wife? When things are standing still, when things are stagnant, when nothing is working, when not, nobody gets to, the, get to bite this disease of disloyalty and succeed. He said he has called us out of darkness for us to show forth. I believe that from this week, somebody is going to show forth royalty like never before. You will display the blessings of God. There's no devil anywhere that can stop you. The same thing with man. He told us a few minutes ago of Rahab. Rahab was loyal to the grave. FBI came. Say, Rahab, we saw the women, the men, they just came from Israel. Intelligent tells us how they escaped you. He said they came. They came. What a risk. What a risk. To risk your life for some spice you never know. And today we hear people say, they just use you and dump you. They just don't use you. Don't let them use you. That's how they use people. They use, and they talk to your head and you allow yourself to be disloyal. And the Holy Ghost can't move. Remember when Moses stood in the front of 3,000 people? They were stoning him and calling him in the, in the Egyptian tongue. Fool, mumu, mumutious, mumutic, mumunacious. There's nothing they didn't call Moses so that he can be disloyal to God. But he stood there and God said, son, tell them to go forward. In these last days we're in, you will see this loyalty running rampage. And the Holy Ghost can't help anyone that is disloyal to his lordship. The lordship of Jesus. It means now that he is my lord and savior. He owns me. He guides my mouth. He guides what I do with my life. He guides what I do with my money. He is my lord. There are places I can't enter anymore. There are things I can't say anymore. If the Holy Ghost is to back me up. I've had people say I was still calling Jesus. And we still had the accident and everybody died. And people wonder. But they, they were shouting Jesus. A disloyal person can never ever master his master. Because the devil knows I'm your master. You can't call Jesus here now. I own you and I know the name of Jesus work. Haven't you wondered yourself? You use the same name others use and it's not working. Loyalty to his lordship. Number two, loyalty to his laws. We have the laws of the spirit. It's called the laws of life and blessings in Romans chapter 1 let's read it so that we can pray as we understand this there's nothing God requires from all of us and those of you hearing me there's nothing he wants than your loyalty come what may no matter what I go through no matter what the devil brings no matter what arrow he shoots at me there are spiritual laws we cannot break Romans 8, let's read together. Romans 8, verse 1 and 2. Spiritual laws. The laws of the spirit. The laws of the spirit. The laws of the spirit. Let's read. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are where? In Christ Jesus. Somebody say, I'm in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. Say it loud and clear. I'm in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. I am now in Christ Jesus. I can no longer live anyhow. I can no longer talk anyhow. I live in Christ Jesus. It said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not. 
who walk not after the flesh but what what does that mean it's those who are loyal to the spirit they are not carnal anymore they are not waiting for you to insult me and i insult you you slap me i slap you you slander me i slander you you greet me i greet you you hit me i hit you he said no they are now in christ you can't live like that anymore you cannot you live in christ but we walk after the dictates of the spirit, after the lordship of the spirit. Look at verse 2. He introduces us to that law. He said, for what? The law. For the law. For the law. Spirit of what? The law of the spirit of life. The law. The Holy Ghost entered. Listen to this. The Bible said Jesus was doing so well. He has his own program. And the moment he was being baptized and the Holy Ghost entered into him. How many of you know the first place the Holy Ghost took him to? The Bible said he led him to the wilderness. Let me go home. I said, there's no going home. I have come now. Follow my law. But can I tell my mom? No, 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 no. Can I quickly go and drink? No, 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 no. I've come. Assignment starts. Led him to where? Let me take a mosquito net. Can I take something? Let me take my something to cover. We're going right now. When you read that, you don't know how powerful it is. Jesus was led into the wilderness. Wilderness is that now duty starts. The law of the spirit took him into the wilderness. And for 40 days and 40 nights, the spirit took charge. And from that day, he began to take control of Jesus Christ. He was loyal to the day he gave up the Holy Ghost. Say, Father, into thy hand, I commit my destiny. There is nothing you want that the Holy Ghost doesn't know where it is. There's nothing you want to do. But if you are not loyal to the spirit of life, to the laws that causes you to live a royal life, the enemy will ruin your life like it did the first Adam. Finally, number three, when the Holy Ghost comes into us, hallelujah, we are to be loyal to the lifestyle of heaven. The lifestyle of heaven. What is the lifestyle of heaven? Jesus carried that lifestyle everywhere he went. We are to be loyal to the lifestyle of heaven. What is the lifestyle of heaven? It's loyalty. That's why Lucifer said, well, if all of you are going to be bound down here as people who have no choice, I am getting out of this nonsense. And I'm going to be like the most I God. The Bible said God had it in his heart and said, we are casting you down till tomorrow. Satan, Lucifer, son of the morning, was cast down because of his disloyalty to use his giftings to honor and to worship God. Any day you wake up and think you can use your body, you can use your life the way you feel and how you want. It's my mouth, I say what I want to say. It's my legs and I go where I want to go. It's my money, I'm going to do what I want to do. Guess what? The Bible says Samson did not know that the Holy Ghost have left him. That's why you see Christians suffering. All over the world. They don't even know he's left. He's gone. He can't stay where men are not loyal. He can't stay where they will not follow his lordship. Follow his laws. And follow his lifestyle. There are three lifestyles in heaven. The lifestyle of love. The lifestyle of love. That's why you can't walk away from love. When you walk away from love. You lose everything. Because God is love. And he that loveth is of God. Lifestyle of heaven number two is the lifestyle of faith. Where there is no faith. And there is unbelief and murmuring and complaining. The Holy Ghost can't stay there. That's why we're warned. We were warned. Never quench the Holy Ghost. Don't choke the Holy Ghost. Because the lifestyle of heaven is a lifestyle of faith. We walk not by sight, but by faith. God knows how to guide you through his GPS. I see greatness about to explode in your life. I see greatness about to explode in your life. I see greatness about to explode in your life. 
I see glory of God about to descend on you in the name of Jesus. If you will allow him lead, there's nothing he will not do for you. Thank you, everlasting Father. Finally, is the lifestyle of love, of faith, and of humility. God will never, he said, he give that grace, he give that favor to the humble. We can name names of men and women who remain loyal until God intervened. That's why Abraham remains a friend of God till tomorrow. The Holy Ghost lives in you. He does not live in heaven. And I want to share with you tonight. He is a lifter of humble people. He is a lifter of those who don't mind the Holy Ghost. Did you hear what James, the brother of Jesus, told us? He said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of who? Of God. And he will what? Exalt, promote, lift you in due season. Somebody is here tonight. You don't do what everybody does. You allow the Holy Ghost to be the Lord of your legs, Lord of your mouth, Lord of your mind, Lord of your actions. And when you follow the voice of the Spirit, you will never struggle. Stand with me as we show him our 